without further ado, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Joey. You got it. I'll go ahead and get your uh, PowerPoint up for you. All right. Well, first, I, I definitely want to thank Martin and Fred for continuing this um, platform. Uh, I think it's neat. I think it's awesome to hear other coaches from even in, within our region and, and around the state to see what they're doing. And um, it's a great idea, and I appreciate you know all the guys and girls that are out here today um, on a Memorial Day weekend, you know, spending time to, to listen to you know some of the things that we have to say. Um, just uh, for future or going through this, I'm going through my sinuses, so I apologize if I kind of sound nasally or. If I'm not as clear, uh, I get excited when I start talking. So if I if I go too fast, Warren, please slow me down or tell me to repeat myself. Um, and that's how I get uh, when we start talking, and you know, we we tell our guys, you know, get out of your comfort zone and do things that uh that will improve you. Uh, and this is definitely out of my comfort zone. If you know me, you know I'm a man of few words. Uh, so being able to try to stretch this out for 50 minutes is going to be hard for me, but I'm going to try my best. Um, but this is everything that we we do at, at Sam Houston. We, we try to put a lot of intent in it uh, based on the type of player we have coming in. Uh, so our, our zonal defending unit, I think, is a big part of a lot of what we do and the success we've had. Uh, we do just get a lot of basics. And and I'm a firm believer in all the things that we do. Um, Everything that I have, I've stolen. So I don't want you to think that uh, it's come out of my brain. I'm not. I'm not a very smart guy, but I, I learned how to steal very well. I learned how to take things from other people and use it to my advantage. Uh, and so that's what I've done here. Uh, my my first coach when I was at well, I'll next slide, Warren. I'll, I'll go into a, kind of my background, uh, where I'm coming from. I just kind of want to put that out there. Um, can you get to the yeah uh played a couple of years well yeah I, did. I just wanted to, to give a shout out to to mike wearson who i was an assistant coach for a year um everything that we've done here at, at sam is all based on the things i've learned from him uh he went on to to coach at allen if you know mike he's a really you know good guy good uh christian dude uh, he went to Allen for a few years, and he's off at Kentucky. And I think his brother just got nominated and put in the Hall of Fame or uh, Hall of Honor for Tasco. Uh, so that's a pretty good honor at Wichita Falls Rider. So, you know, shout out to Cal to to Carl Wiersma for for doing that. I know he's been on a couple times, uh, but again, I just want to again reiterate the stuff that we use, the stuff that I've borrowed and stolen from other people. So, uh, I really appreciate that the, the the guys that I've worked under and the guys that I've been a part of. Okay, Warren, you can go to the next slide. Uh, our preseason, kind of give you a gist of what we're working with. Uh, we're on block schedule. Uh, when I got to Sam, we were on block schedule, but we weren't double blocked. Uh, the first three or four years, we had varsity on an A day and freshman on a B day, so we weren't able to see them every day. Uh, luckily, that's changed. You know. When you win a few games, you get to to do some things, and and luckily I was able to pull some strings and and get it double blocked. So we're definitely blessed to have that, and to have some of the principals and athletic coordinators to help us do that. Um, so it, it's very crucial to our our dynamic and what we do. So you know we we are on block scheduling. We we get to see them every day now for the past three years. Uh, of course, when you're blocked, you know you get four periods. Each period's a, a, an hour and a half. And, you know, you got 30, you have to do a 30 minute study hall for us. Anyway, uh, we do have principals at our school that come through and make sure we're doing our study hall. So it's, it's very stringent, something that we have to do. Um, but, you know, we do it anyway, so it, it, it doesn't matter if they come or not. We're, we're doing our study hall. Uh, we break our, our fall semester. You know, we go from the beginning of school uh, through to Thanksgiving break. That's what we consider our preseason. Uh, so we, we dedicate a lot of our, first half, I guess you could say, to the attacking principles that we try to install and, and put in. Uh, it usually takes six to seven weeks, depending on, you know, what kind of group you have coming in. Um, 
And of course, the second half of that, we, we try to schedule five weeks to get through our zonal unit. Uh, that usually ends right before Thanksgiving break. You know, obviously the past three or four years, we've I've been a part of Tasco, and uh, that that week before spring, uh, Thanksgiving, you know, I we got to take off. We got to get to to Tasco to help and set up and and do the things that we need to do for the clinic. So that that take you got to take that into consideration when you're planning a lot of these things. So we usually don't plan for that week, obviously, uh, but so we we usually try to end all this stuff before I, I take off and get it done. Um, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do our soccer training. This is we get the balls out. We're out there doing the things that we need to do, and then of course Tuesday, Thursdays are our our weightlifting days. And luckily, we've had a our athletic trainer. She got certified to be strength and conditioning coach, so she's been kind of heading up our strength and conditioning the past couple of years, which has been awesome. Uh, there's just one thing off my plate I don't have to really focus on. I can, you know, she I give it to her. She gets it done. And she's pretty tough. She gets on them. So it's been pretty nice. Uh, but obviously in the past, I've had to do it, do it my own, which is fine. I don't mind doing it. But again, just something off our plate and, and you know, something that I can continue to focus on soccer. Uh, also, when, you, when you're planning, you got to also take into consideration the holidays, rainy days. Uh, we've been fortunate at Arlington ISD to uh, have indoor facilities the past two years. So that you know, rainy days don't really matter now. We can we can still go on with the stuff that we need. But prior to that, rainy days were, were a big factor, uh, you know. So, you know, when you obviously when you're scheduling your stuff, we have to make sure we, we count for all that. That's why we put five weeks into our zone away. Usually we usually go four weeks, um, but we put in the fifth week to make sure that we can have time to cover everything. OK, Warren, next slide. <laughs> Um, we do have two soccer classes. Uh, one's our freshman soccer period, and the other is our varsity JV period. Uh, obviously, freshman's easy. We we keep them separated because we want to try to instill good work habits with our freshmen. Uh, and if we mix in some of our sophomores and juniors, sometimes they're not the best of guys to to really look up to. So. If I can keep my freshmen separated from everybody else, it it helps in the long run. So that's a big reason why we keep it separated. Uh, you know, I've heard of other teams that do, you know, opposite where they have the varsity all by themselves and then they, they include their freshmen in JV, which, you know, works for them. But I, I just think for us, this works a little bit better for us uh, in, in our behavior and the way that we want to make sure we train our guys right. Uh, in the varsity period, we, we usually separate them in a red and blue group. We don't necessarily push the varsity JV group yet at the very beginning because uh, we want to make sure we give everybody a fair shot. You know, if their their goal is to make varsity and they're a sophomore, we want to make sure that we give them every opportunity to try to make that. Um, obviously, with every day we tell them we're, we're evaluating. So, you know, the red group is usually the top group, the varsity group, and we try to put anywhere in between 24 to 28, depending on the numbers. Um, we only have 25 bags, so we try to keep it around that. Obviously, if there's guys that are kind of in the middle, we'll put them in the red group, and then everybody else is in the blue group. In fact, this we had so many numbers this past year, we actually had a white group. Those are the guys that we knew we were going to cut no matter what, um, but we had, to, we had to get them out of the way because they were really drill busters uh, and – you know, it was too late to get them out of the period. So, you know, we, we made a separate group for them and, and, and you know, it, it, they didn't mind. They didn't care. They, they kind of knew they were kind of on the outs. And so to be able to play with guys at their level, that it didn't matter. But, you know, it, it's pretty competitive. You know, we, we try to tell them, hey, you know, your goal is to try to get on the red group if you're trying to be the varsity guys uh, or you're trying to be, make the varsity team. So um, we try to make it as competitive as we can and try to be as honest as we can with them. Uh, you know, if you're in the red group and you're messing around, we we will drop them down to the blue group and and make sure that, you know, we keep them trying to play at a high standard. So, Nick's Warren. Uh, just to kind of go over our, our profile the past three or four years, um, you know, we, we're – 
we're getting a lot of players that don't have any experience being on a team. We're getting a lot of players who haven't been coached who play a lot of park soccer or played soccer when, you know, they were five and six year old and then they quit and then they want to play soccer again. So, um, you know, we have, we're having to go back and reteach a lot of things as far as, far as what is, what it's like to be a part of a program. You know, we, we try to go over, we try to keep it as basic as we can and go over three main things, which is our work ethic, you know, work your butt off, be a good person and then follow directions. I think those are the three main things that if we can get down, we're going to, we're going to be in a good spot. We're going to have a good relationship and you're going to learn something. You're going to, you're going to get better every day. Um, they also have to understand that there's consequences to actions. Um, we have very few players that, that are competitive, that play at a high level club. Most of our players play at our local clubs. You know, you got your FC Arlington's, your Real GPs and stuff like that. And, you know, for the most part, they don't teach a lot of these zonal principles or even sometimes attacking principles. You know, some of the stuff that we go over attacking wise, where uh, working on combination play, they've never heard of the word overlap. Uh, so, you know, we're having to do and teach a lot of these things that you would think they've already learned would have would have learned, but they don't. So, um, you know, this is why our unit is important to us because if we, we do this, our zonal unit, we do it every year, no matter what. Um, and I have obviously, once they get to a point where they're junior and senior year, they've seen it a couple of times. And now they're a little bit more comfortable. And, um, the, you know, the biggest thing that we try to tell them, we do this every year because the teams that come back are always different. You know, you have, always have a senior class that graduate. Uh, and so every time that you step on the field every year, there's a new guy next to you. So we believe in, in, some, in continuity. And, and if we can do this every year, then that means that's four weeks for four years. That's 16 weeks that they're going over zonal principles that, you know, if you put them in a, in a professional background, a professional setting, they're getting it, you know, all the way up until they're 14, 15 years old, you know, obviously in the professional league. So, they're only getting a, a very, very small tense of what professionals are getting, uh, you know, in their background. So we feel like if we can do it every year, at least that's four weeks they're spending on defending. And, you know, we try to always include the importance of that and and understand that if you can defend well, that it's going to keep you in the game. And so I, it, it's a big part of what we do. And, I, and, I, and I'm a big believer in it. OK, Warren, next one. <laughs> Uh, our our weekly breakdown on Mondays so is is our is our our time that we really teach. Uh, we we make sure we take our time and get it done right. Uh, we stop if we need to stop it and and reteach it if we need to. Uh, it's really basic, you know. I it's interesting listening to the USC guys and the USSF guys talk about their their courses the past couple of weeks. I thought it was really interesting. I. I did in mine with through the NSCAA, which is now the USC, and we were always taught to, or they always taught us to go through. All right, you're going to go whatever skill you're practicing or going over. The first part is unopposed. Then you add some pressure. Then you go into a direction. And then you end on a game. You know that's kind of the the reference I've used, and that's kind of the reference I use weekly for this. Um, and so Monday is is there's no pressure. We're working on this skill. Uh, we'll, we'll usually end on a small, you know, possession type game. Wednesday, we always reviewing. Now we're going to a direction where it's usually to goal. Uh, it's usually the defensive third, which is a critical part of the. Um, try to coach during the play, you know, constantly reminding them of the principles that we're, we taught on Monday and only stop if it's necessary. If obviously if it's a pattern that they're still making the same mistakes over and over and over, we're going to stop and do it. But, Usually we're coaching on the flow and, and try to keep them playing as much as we can. Um, and then the Friday, it's usually our, you know, we call it a test day. It's not. It's just small sided games, seeing what they've learned throughout the week, little coaching. But again, letting them play, you know, that's the biggest thing that we try to do is let them play, play in a, in a control setting uh, where we're, you know, we're controlling the formation they're in that that influences what you've been doing that that week. 
Uh, and so, you know, that's what we try to do. And again, the small sided part is, is, is huge for us. All right, well. uh, when we're, coaching, I'm a big believer in attitude. Uh, you know, the old quote, defense wins championships. I'm a big believer in that. Um, you know, I, I, I find gratitude in winning one and one Oh games. You know, you can't always win everything 3-0, 4-0, um, but I'd much rather win a 1-0 game than a 3-3, 3-2, or a 4-3 game. That's, to me, that's a lot of stress. Um, but it, it is mindset, and you got to teach that mindset from the beginning. You got to, you got to teach, effort, to preach effort. You got to reward effort, and you got to make sure that they understand that every day that you're out there. And if you don't, if you lay off a day, then that they're going to, you know, they're going to see that it's okay to lay off and that's not okay with me. And then that's what I try to tell my assistant coach to get, stay on them, make sure that the, 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 the effort is high, make sure our attitude and our effort is high in coaching. We're intense. We're in there. We're, we're doing, as we coach, we're very energetic and, and we want to make sure that, that the players reciprocate that effort. Uh, the zone of defending is a team concept. It, it, everybody's got to do their part. Uh, and so I think that's the biggest part of, you know, if you run a zonal system, it's, it's huge when it become when, when you're, everybody's doing their part and everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then of course, the biggest thing is communication. It's always, we're, we're always constantly teaching communication. Uh, even when it's first defender, we're, we're constantly teaching that, you know, whatever they say, you know, in our system, we say, I got ball. You got to make sure you're saying that over and over and over. we got to teach that. Um, you know, and of course we always, we're always, you know, relating whatever we're doing to the game, big games come down to making a defensive big play. If you can, if you can hold a team at those critical points in the, in the final third or defensive third, you know, more than likely you're going to win. So, you know, we try to make sure we, we really alliterate that in, in our training sessions. Okay. Next one. Again, I just want to make sure I, I really come into this where we feel like small-sided games are, are critical. Uh, we don't ever go 11 v 11 until tryouts, really. Even after tryouts, it's the most we probably go with 7 v 7. I think it's critical because our guys do not touch the ball as much as they should. So if we're going 11 v 11, even on a Friday, you know, there's a chance a, a kid might not even touch the ball maybe once or twice, you know, in a 40 minute game uh, or, you know, we have so many numbers. We can't go 11 v 11 if we wanted to, because somebody might not play at all. Uh, so we try to we, you know, Corver, the Corver goals are big investments for us. We got four or five of those. We use those to death. We are having to buy replacement goals at least every other year, if not every year. Um, because we we want these guys going to goal, and small sided games are the for us are the best way to do that, and to make sure that they're getting that game uh, experience that they are lacking, that they're not getting when they're not playing. Um, so you know, in order to maximize their touches in, in the game related activities, we got to do small sided games, and we got to go to goal, um, and we try to put them in in these critical situations. Hopefully, they're thinking. Hopefully, we're forcing them to think about what they're doing they gain that experience so that when the game times comes and they're in that important match they know what to do and they're confident in their, their decision making and then we try to make it as competitive as we can everything's a game everything's either winning or you're losing if you're losing you're, there's a consequence uh if you're winning we we want to want why did you win how did you how did you become successful in this game why did you become successful why do you think you won oh coach is because you know we were, we're actually doing what you said you know we pressure cover here and you know they, they they get excited too so if you're excited they're excited you know they feed off each other i feed off the kids the kids feed off me uh, so we try to do the best that we can to make it competitive you know <clears throat> in our in a lot of our sessions is we you know we're, we're competing a lot of times offense versus defense and a lot of times i'm instigating i'm i'm talking crap for the defense or I'm talking crap to, you know, we had Jose to Ortiz the past four years. I'm saying, Jose, you can't beat these guys. And of course he's going to try to shut me up and say, oh, coach, I'm, I'm going to beat him on the score. And nine times out of 10, he is. Um, but 
Um, you know, I, I try to do my best to, in, to be an instigator as well and, and force them to, co- to compete and talk a little noise with them. And sometimes you got to do that as a coach. So I, I, I have just as much fun doing this and coaching defense as much as they like playing. So uh, this, you know, this is a I, I enjoy it. I enjoy this part of the game. Warren, next. So I'm going to go we do as, as quickly as we can. I know it's about 930. Um, and some of the things that we like to do uh, first week and uh, working on the first defender. Uh, again, Warren has all the PowerPoint. So if you're into that, I've shared it with them and you'll get to have access to all this. Uh, you know, we, we talk about technique and fundamentals. And the biggest thing as the first defender is your body positioning and your communication skills. And I'll go back, Warren. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are always constantly preaching communication. I got ball. Uh, you know, if you look at the very left picture, the picture on the bottom, the, the pair on the bottom is the way we don't want to practice defending where a guy is going to go straight up on a on attacking player and you basically giving them three options to attack. We want to try to take away two options always, obviously. Um, we want to force the ball in a direction, usually maybe on their weak foot, or maybe we're going to force them to maybe their left back, who's a weaker opponent. Uh, we're always going to try to force the ball somewhere. Uh, so we feel like we, we try to play a shoulder. <laughs> what we tell them, play a shoulder, force the ball in a direction where we feel that they can help us win the ball, or we might force them to our, our cover, which will come later. Um, you know, our relationship to the ball, we try to try to, you know, anytime we're trying to put pressure, Try to put them arm's length away. Try to put a lot of pressure on them where we're a little bit tighter than usual, but not too tight where if the attacker takes a t- an aggressive touch, he beats us. And, of course, we don't want to be far away where the attacker can pick his head up and, and do whatever he wants. We want, to, we want to put enough pressure where he has to put his head down. Um, so we're working on this constantly on Monday. Uh, you know, the progression, we'll, we'll have a player five yards away. He plays with the ball. And he has a slight bend to the ball. We're working on his approach. Uh, he's, he's working on his communication. I got ball, I got ball. Side on, play a shoulder, force the ball right or left. We work on both of those. Um, and again, we're on Monday is a teach day. So we're, we're teaching all this as much as we can. We're repetition, we're repping it out as much as we can. Next, Warren. Uh, next, you know, partner dribbling will we'll do the same thing. Kids are five yards away. They play a ball. They approach it. And then we'll have them dribble across maybe 20 yards. Sometimes we'll use the whole field or side of the field like like we do gassers from sideline to sideline. Uh, you know, we'll tell the attackers just go about 50 percent. Uh, if they're going 100 percent, they're not shuffling their feet. Uh, so we really want to work on their footwork here. Uh, so he's just dribbling. We're forcing the ball either right or left. We use the football lines on our on our turf field. So a lot of times we'll say, all right, make sure the ball stays on that line. So we'll tell the attacker, dribble right, dribble left, and have that de- uh, defender really try to open his hips up, and get from side to side to try to really play a shoulder to make sure that ball stays on the line. And then, of course, the next pro- progression, we, we make these uh, five by eight, five by ten grids. On one side of the grid, we have the attackers. The other side, we have the uh, defenders. As you can see, the blue team, I'm looking at the right uh, picture there. The blue team is the defending team. They have a goal on one side. The attacking team, it forms a line. And then we uh, have a serving person, and then we have a defender. And so as he plays the ball out, the defender has to bend his run, just like we worked on at the beginning get side on and force the ball away from the goal and then find a way to make a tackle. You know, uh, we tried to make that a, a, a competitive game as well. You know, we'll go for a couple minutes, then switch, and they, they keep track of their goals. Uh, loser has a consequence. You know, usually with the freshmen, we don't get to the next progression. With the older guys, we do. The next progression is go 2v1. In the same grid, you know, now you had those two attackers uh, and still playing the same ball across and then go 2v1. Uh, I did forget to add that, you know, once you go from the, I think it's the left side here, 
Uh, once you go a couple minutes on the left, then you rep it, you switch, you get that middle cone, switch it to the other side. Now you're, you're working on bending your run the other side and um, working on defending, pushing the ball out to the opposite side. So we're always constantly working on each side, uh, making sure that they know exactly where to force the ball and how to defend, how to, you know, get out there, put pressure, chop your steps when you get close to the ball, working on all that, the the really intricate details of defending. All right, or next. Um, Wednesday, again, we, we, we review, and sometimes it takes minutes, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. We'll go back and maybe do uh, some of the things that we did at the very beginning on Monday to kind of review, to see what they see what they've learned uh then then we go to goal and that's a big deal to us to try to find a way to get to goal as fast as we can this is a simple drill that we do or game uh, we have three lines obviously two lines at the post one about on top of the circle we got a serving line a defending line an attacking line you get out there serve ball defender again bending his run using the same run we did monday forcing the ball wide in a critical area in our defensive third uh, forcing the the attacker to uh, take a shot at a bad angle. Now we're incorporating our goalkeeper. So now the goalkeepers have to work on communicating with the defender, uh, using his feet, using his angles that, to obviously make the the goal small for them. Um, you know, we try to do this, make it make it do a competition. We'll we'll go through this for, for the first time. Then we switch the ball to the other side. Uh, we switch roles, and then after that, then we make it into a competition. So. You know, we might have not have them switch lines. We might say, all right, the attacking line, you stay there. Defending line, you stay there. Serving line, stay there for three minutes. Defenders, you're trying to see how many goals you can score. Defenders, I'm sorry, attackers, you're trying to see how many goals you can score. Defenders, obviously, defending, servers, serving. And then the team with the most goals wins or the team that maybe gives up the least amount of goals wins, whatever you want to do. You know, obviously, the losing teams have consequences, push-ups, uh, sprinting, uh, whatever whatever the effort is that day. If it's a great effort, it's usually push-ups, you know, 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups. If it's not a good effort, we're, we're running gassers or we're running 18-yard sprints uh, to try to make them not like losing. Next one, that's usually a Wednesday for us. Of course, Fridays are our play days. Uh, this is our, our game. Uh, you know, I've seen plenty of this, versions of this game. Uh, but our shooter stays on, so we got one team on one end, another team on the other. They start off back-to-back -back with the ball in, the, in between. We say go. They turn and go and defend. Again, coaching the defensive side, not, not really worried about the attacking side. If they miss a shot or, you know, they're taking too many touches, I, I, it doesn't concern me. I'm, I'm really focusing on what the defenders are doing. And now you're defending, you win the ball, now you're countering. So you're working on that transition now. Uh, so, you know, we try to keep it going as much as we can. We separate them in groups of six or seven. Uh, I, I wouldn't put 10 or 12 groups or in a group because that, the lines are too long. Um, in this, hopefully we're trying to get as many repetitions as we can with guys. Those guys that are in the lines, give them enough time to catch their breath. And then by the time they catch their breath, they're ready to go again. So it's it's a really competitive game. It's a fast paced game, and you know you might have to take breaks for the goalkeepers because uh, this is a workout for the goalkeepers as well. Um, we we've been blessed to have a bunch of goalkeepers the past three or four years. I think last year in our in, in the preseason in the fall we had at least eight goalkeepers or guys trying to be a goalkeeper. Let me put it that way. They maybe not have been goalkeepers. They were trying to. Um, but again, trying to find guys that want to be in the goal is sometimes a, a hard task. So, um, having enough goalkeepers to, to make this game valid and, and make it, you know, enjoyable, it's, it's, it's important. So we always try to make sure that goalkeepers are getting their work in. Um, you can play to a certain amount of time or play to a certain amount of goals. We, we usually do a round robin tournament, uh, where we're splitting the red group into four groups, five groups, each of them play each other. Um, and then, of course, a loser has a consequence. All right, Warren.
And that's our first week. And again, we try to get as many repetition, go into, go into goal uh, games, put situations where we feel are critical, which is a defensive third. Uh, second week, second defender, pressure cover. I got ball. We're bending our runs. Second defender is also at an angle, providing support. Uh, that spatial relationship between the first and second defender is important. Uh, we don't want to be flat, what we call being flat, where the second defender steps up and is even with the first. We want to be a nice angle where he can see both ball and a t other attacker. And, uh, and obviously he's there if the first defender doesn't get beat. You know, and then if he passes the ball across, and then that's his, I guess you could say zone, and then he steps up. So we're working on the, his ability to step up. The first person saying, I got pressure, or, I got ball. Second guy's communicating, I got cover. Uh, in this situation here, we're in the, in the animation, in the, in the picture. You got the guy, the ball on the left. We blow it, we go by the whistle. So when I blow the whistle, First defender approaches the ball. We, we look how he approaches it, how his body positioning is. Is he side on? Is he on the shoulder? And then we'll blow the second whistle. The second defender gets out there. He's showing us what he can do, or hopefully he has an idea of what he's supposed to do. And we're teaching that. And we're teaching him, you know, obviously the space in between and, and his body positioning, his hips are open. And then, of course, on the second whistle or third whistle that we blow, First attacker will pass to the second attacker, and then they switch roles. So you got this, uh, the cover guy now. He becomes the first defender. First defender now becomes the second defender, and we constantly rep that all day or most of the time. We're repping that over and over and over. They got to see it. They got to understand it. We want it to be uh, – we don't want them to have to think about it. It should just become instinct. And so the more that we rep it, the better they become. Uh, and so we're, we're doing that constantly. And then, of course, after you've done that for one group, you got to do it for the other. So you're switching roles and we're going over it over and over and over. You know, obviously with the varsity guys, it, it becomes redundant. So we try to move on when we feel like they have a good grasp. But the freshmen, we're really teaching this as much as we can. OK, Warren, next one. And of course, once we get in, you know, we try to use the football lines as much as we can. Uh, so if that first cone is on the goal line, there's a we go five yards. There's the, the split line, and then the ten yard line is where the other cone will be. Uh, so it's ten by fifteen, ten by ten, wherever you want to use. Um, so when we blow the whistle, we got pressure cover, and of course we want to make sure we have. Um, we, we make sure the field is getting smaller. We make the field smaller. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then, of course, they're always communicating the roles. As soon as we get into that, we're, we're playing 2v2. You know, four that's working together, we'll have them go play another group of four that's working together uh, in a grid, the same grids. You know, we'll use the same grids so that uh, the transition of games is easy. Uh, so that we can quickly get into what we need to do. So 4v4, uh, not 4v4, but groups of four. Now we're getting 2v2. Uh, we have attackers on one side, defenders on the other. And then uh, now you, that two is trying to break down the other two, dribble across the line. Uh, next one. I mean, like I said, that's the that's the progression we use. Two v two. Um, make sure you got plenty of balls in each grid so that they're always going. Uh, we like to have a a little bit of numbers in each of these so that as you're going around coaching, once the that two is going out and defending, if obviously if something went wrong, you have at least five to ten seconds to quickly get in, make a coaching point as they're waiting to go again, um, and so. I like I like that. I enjoy that. Obviously, if you have eight numbers in each group, it, you're waiting a long time. So we want to make sure that the numbers are just right so that they're getting a little bit of breather and then they're working again. So 4v4 is great. 6v6 or groups of four is great. Groups of six might be OK. Obviously, when you get into groups of eight or ten, it's I think it's too much. Uh, but again, repetition, getting it going, uh, using the yard lines as a reference for the zonal defending and they're guarding the space. Um, 
pressure, cover, constantly going over that, yelling that. And then we're going to celebrate success. Obviously, if they get it right, if they do it right, we're going to tell them a good job. We're going to give them a high five or, you know, we're going to yell and say, you know, whatever we need to, to make sure that they know that they're doing it right. Uh, the progression for our older guys is uh, we'll go 3v2 uh, in that same situation. You know, the attackers will stay on one end. Defenders will stay on another. We go for three to two, three to four minutes, and then we switch the role so that they understand they're the defending role. Uh, the games that we play, if you dribble across the line as an attacker, you get two points. Defenders, if you can win the ball and dribble across the attacking line, you get a point. So if they keep track of the points, you know, winners win, losers lose, there's a consequence. Next. Warren. Uh, again, next progression on Wednesday, going 2v2 to goal. Uh, same thing, pressure cover. We're in the critical area in the defensive third. Um, now we have an outlet, so pressure cover. The defenders will win the ball, find the other goalkeeper, or you know, sometimes we've used injured players or managers as the target player. Uh, we use whatever we can. There's always an outlet, um, somebody that can possibly move, so they're kind of just moving side to side. They're not just static. Uh, again, adding the goalkeepers, we feel that's important. They, they can work on their goalkeeper stuff. Tackers, obviously, they're trying to score. Um, play for a few minutes, switch it out, have them play, and then make it into a game, make it into a competition. Um, uh, progression, obviously, going 3v2. Uh, you start. I start the game out with the keepers have to distribute. So now the keepers are also working on a distribution, throwing the ball out. Um, you can have the the cones where the attackers are you can have them wider if you want or if you want to keep them intact like that that's fine whatever you want to do this is how we do it that that's usually about 30 35 yards out we want those guys to give our defenders time to step out and be able to identify the roles i got ball i got cover and uh, you know of course in the defensive third we're, our our game plan is to force it out in our third so you know we're trying to make sure the ball gets in an awkward angle for the – make it easier on our goalie and, and force them to shoot at a bad angle. Next, Warren. And Friday's our, our, our game day. Um, we, we'll usually try to start off with this game if we can. Uh, it's our, um, our 4v2 transition game. Uh, this one's a lot to teach. So we have to take our time. Sometimes this might be the only game we play. Uh, for our older guys, this game we might do on the Wednesday. If they're if everything's going well, we might be able to play this. But you know, you at least need uh, is it three teams of four. The the blue team obviously in the middle starts it off. They go in any direction. Uh, they're gonna attack the two. If they score, they get the ball and they go the other way. The team defending, you got two defenders. As soon as they win it. They play it to their target players on the outside. They have to overlap them, uh, and then they go attack the green. And then it just keeps going. So once green defends and wins it, they find green and go attack uh, blue, who should be switching out with red. Uh, if the goalkeeper saves it, he automatically distributes out wide, and they automatically get into the next game. Uh, so we make it into, a, a obviously, a, comp a competition. Team with the most goals wins or teams that, that – let in the least amount of goals, wins, loser has a consequence. Go ahead, Warren, next. And then we try to end uh, as we can in a realistic game. This is our wall game. This is our, our player's favorite game. They love this game, whether it's going 4v4, 5v5, 6v6. Um, I'm sure you you do most of y'all probably do a similar game, um, but in this game we try to make it again relatable to what we're trying to do. So we put them, we have them in a, a set formation, a two two two. Uh, so now you got you can work on anything you can as far as grouping. So you got maybe two center backs, two holding mids, or two holding mids and two forwards working together. However you want to group them, 
Uh, we usually do group them to players that they're going to play with um, in our groups. So this is a let's say this is a red group, um, and we're going to group them with defenders with defenders, midfielders with midfielders, attackers with attackers. So they're working in their same groups. Uh, obviously, being a two-two, now you're working on the layers. You know, we got the front layer and the back layer. The game realistic. You score. The, def- the the team that loses, you you get to the outside. So you got obviously have four teams of four. Two teams playing, two teams off. One is split and they're on the sidelines. The other is split and they're on the inlines. If you lose, you go to the sidelines. Sidelines go to the inline. Inline quickly gets in. Uh, once you score on the goal, whatever goal you're attacking, you get the ball from that goal and you go the opposite way. And we don't wait to wait to see what the other team wait for them to come in. They have to quickly get in the game. So that kind of works on a little transition as well. Um, and so, you know, you can catch a team slipping or if they're sleeping and not getting back as much as, as fast as they should, you can quickly get a goal if you want. And so again, that, that hopefully works on a lot of different things for us. Um, and like I said, the kids really love this game. They like playing this game. I kind of hold it to them. So if we don't have a good weight, room session Tuesday or Thursday, I'll tell them, all right, Friday, we're not playing our wall game and they'll get upset and they'll, they'll make sure they, you know, especially the older guys, they'll make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do so they can play this game. They really love it. Um, I've done it where the top team wins. Everybody else um, has to do some type of consequence. Uh, But obviously the past three or four years, we've had Jose Ortiz and any team that he's on, he's going to win. So I have to put the top two teams, you know, if you're in the top two, you win the bottom two. Now you have a consequence. So at least they have something to fight for and compete against. Uh, so, you know, like I said, they enjoy the game. And obviously the big thing in this game, in our wall game that I found out is uh, the goalie. So if, if they, there's a good team and you have a good goalie, they're going to dominate this game. Um, so I usually put, you know, if I have a good starting group that's in i put them on a weaker goalie um i put them with a weaker goalie that forces them to have to defend a little bit better and so you know it's just whatever you prefer and how you see how you can really get the best out of the guys next warren and, that, and of course as you can see it's it's this is the same Monday. It's a small sided within a grid grid work. Uh, now we're pressure cover balance, identifying the roles uh, as the ball moves. They're moving, and we want to make sure that they uh, understand where they're supposed to be, making the field compact. Uh, wherever the ball is moving, they're moving no matter what. Um, they're communicating with each other. They're making sure they're in the right shape. Uh, they, we don't want to be flat right now. This is all basic defending. Um, obviously once you make your teams and you find your, your system, you're going to be working on whether you're going to play a flat back four, you play offside strap, you know, we're not trying to do that right now. It's just regular pressure cover balance. Um, we, we used again, using the football line. So if that first cone on the left is the goal line and you skip five yards and go to the 10, the next cone is on the 10 and you skip the 15 and go to the 20. That's where the next cone is. So using that 20 yards, 20 by 20 usually. Um, and again, we use the whistle method. We're going by the whistle. We're making sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. When they blow the whistle, they make a pass. Now they're, they're you know, obviously moving to the ball. The player holds the ball and waits for the next whistle and, you know, so on and so on. So and we're controlling it to see what they know, to see what they've learned and learn and teaching as we go. Again, Monday is a teaching day. We want to make sure they get it down. All right, next one. Same thing in the grids. We'll go 3v3. You know, obviously, in the at the very beginning, 3v3, we use that group of six. Then they'll go find another group of six, and then we'll play 3v3 possession. Um, same rules as, as last week. They dribble across the line. They get two points as attackers. Defenders, once they win the ball, get a point for transition. So, again, communicate. We're coaching. We're, we're 
rewarding or we're celebrating success if they get it right. Um, even if they, they get beat, it's not always not going to work. But if they're in the right shape, we're still going to celebrate success. We're going to make sure they get it right. Um, so that's usually what we do. Again, as you can tell, it's kind of the same thing. You get into a rhythm. Go ahead, Warren. Um, Wednesday, um, again, going to go in a critical uh, We'll play a game called Nine Ball. Uh, we'll, obviously, we'll review the stuff that we did on Monday, maybe do, do a little bit of the things that we did at the very beginning of Monday to really go over. And then we got nine balls there, probably about 25 yards away, groups of six. And we'll go 6v3. Obviously, this is a varsity period if we go 6v3. The freshman might go 5v3 or 4v3. Uh, again, working on your defensive third principles, we're going to force the ball wide, force the, the attacking team to make a bad angled shot. And in this game, you have nine opportunities to score. Uh, you get a ball, and then the balls are at three different angles. Uh, so now we're making sure we're working on every different angle that they can attack to or the three basic attack, uh, angles they can attack at. Uh, so that everybody gets an opportunity to be that that cover guy. Uh, and so, again, working on communication, working on their approach, their bend to the run, you know, everything that we're doing, we're doing right now. Adding the goalkeeper, now he's got to work on his communication with his players, forcing the ball out wide, having the goalkeeper shout out orders or what he wants them to do. Uh, clearing the ball out, there's always an outlet. So we have usually goalkeepers or, like I said, injured players, managers, um, games, you know, whoever scores the most or whoever lets in the least amount of goals wins. And then, of course, there's a consequence for losing. All right, next one. And then Friday, we're again, we're playing our wall game. 6v6, got to be in a 3-3 formation. Not, not a whole lot of coaching. Maybe making some pointers, letting them play, uh, letting them get it, you know, get the game in. Um, you know, they love this game. Like I said, you know, you, I, I didn't mention this before, but if the game kind of goes a little bit longer than what it should, if nobody's scoring, maybe you put a time limit, five minutes, maybe four minutes. If there's not a goal score, the team that's been on the longest usually comes off. Then we rotate around. All right, next one. Same thing here. Uh, now we're working on the fourth defender. Um, you know, we, we've kind of three years, we've kind of gone back and forth between a three, five, two and a four, three, three. So we always want to go with, go over a fourth defender just in case we do have to switch formations. Um, and so we, we like to work on this as well. So now you got pressure cover balance, balancing everything out. Uh, three groups of four here. Uh, you have a group of four on one end, group of four on the other. You know, like I said, if the, the goal line is that cone on the left, count 10 yards, that's the next goal, count another 10 yards. So that's 10, 20, that's 30 yards of cones there, uh, working within that, and then another probably 20 to 25 yards in between the two groups. Then you got a group in the middle working on your pressure cover balance. Again, whistle method. The whistle is my friend. Uh, I love using the whistle. The whistle helps me out a lot. When I was younger, I, I was one of those guys that I'm not using the whistle, but now I have to use the whistle. It, it helps me in everything that we do. So don't be afraid to use the whistle, please. Um, but anyway, we, you know, as the whistle is going, the players are passing, players are moving, they're communicating and, you know, making sure that they understand their role in the field. All right, next one. Of course, the possession game we play, uh, or the grid play, uh, game that we play in the using the same format that we just did. The players now uh, are going to pass in between each other and try to split the team in the middle. I'm sure everybody's seen this game. Um, ball has to be on the ground. They get a point if they can split them. If the team in the middle finds a way to intercept the ball, then they switch with that team that they just intercepted it with. 
or if the ball's in the air, if they try to chip them, we don't, we don't, that's too easy, obviously. Uh, so the, we're looking at that split ball, the team in the middle is obviously trying to work on their pressure cover and balance and getting in, in the position to, to win the ball. Um, so that's what we usually work on again, make it, we're making it as competitive as we can. We're switching out groups. Um, you know, maybe if this group of three or this group of four, we'll, we'll sub in another group of four and then switch them around to where they're playing different groups all the time. Uh, obviously, loser has a consequence. Go ahead, Warren. Uh, so much your last nine ball. Now we have uh, groups of eight. Um, I know we on this picture. I just realized that I put the balls all at the bottom, but they actually the goalkeeper starts it. He distributes it out. We have a group of four come out again, working on the defensive third, defensive principles that we have, pressure cover balance. This is where I I tend to sp start splitting them up. So maybe the red group is all defenders and holding mids. Uh, maybe some eight, some some mid uh, box to box midfielders, and the blue teams all of our attacking players, our attacking mids. Uh, now they're they're in groupings of where they're going to be uh, on the field, and so we start looking at that, and of course looking at pressure cover balance, making sure they're doing the things they need to do. Again, constantly stressing communication within our goalkeeper and our defenders. Uh, we always have an outlet. There's a target. Um, the goalkeeper always starts the game. So as soon as the ball is gone or scored, a new group of four is coming on. Uh, and so they're, the, the defenders are constantly switching with every ball uh, so they can come out and, and work on pressing wherever the ball is. So the keeper can really distribute to anybody along that line there. Uh, blue is switching also at the same time. So it's usually I got six before here. So, again, you're switching out another two. Um, so as a coach, I'm usually at the tops working on the attackers, making sure they're switching out. Uh, but the four in the back, they're making sure they're doing their job. Keepers doing their job. You know, again, loser has a consequence. Make it a competition as much as we can. Next one. And then Friday, there. You know, this is probably not a wall game day when when you have a lot of numbers like this. So we go seven v seven. Um, like I said, we have a lot of corver, so we have a lot of fields set up. We have grass fields, we have the turf field, uh, we have an indoor field that's 70 yards wide or long. So we're, you know, try to make as many fields as we can, utilizing all the field space that we have. Again, small sided game, 7v7, got the four back. You know, if, if you notice the four back, and then you got the three forwards, so you can work it that way, or you got the four back in red. And then your three midfielders, if you're four in a four three three, uh, so you can mix it any way you want, group it any way you want. Obviously, I'm I'm going to have my, I'm going to work with my starting goalkeeper with my starting backs, and then use maybe uh, uh, our forwards so they can work on transitioning and finding our forwards' feet. Um, that any way you want to look at it, you can do, group them however you feel comfortable doing. Uh, but again, small sided games are important for us. We got to get them touching. We got to get them in, in game situations where either defending or they're attacking, and and they're putting in situations where they can really be effective for us in a in a real match. But this is what we do for four weeks. I, I've laid out everything that we normally do. Um, so, if you have any questions, the next slide is my email address. Uh, if you have any questions, or even after this, if you have any questions you want to ask, you more than likely. You're more than welcome to do it. Or if you feel like you have any great games or drills that, that hey, I, I think this will work well in this situation, please send them to me. I'm, I'm always open and welcoming new things to, to really get our kids going. Um, but, again, I just felt like I, I love this, this camaraderie we have within our, you know, our group that we meet on Saturday. I want to share what we share. I appreciate uh, Sam and, and – uh, James for the stuff that they've shared earlier in, their, in in this in this endeavor. So I wanted to share what I felt like I felt important to share what we do. Um, but I'm open up for questions if you have them.
Thank you, Coach. No problem. And like I said, I, I, I gave this PowerPoint to Warren, so he has them all. And I'm sure he's already posted it in the Google Docs. Um, this is what it is, and this is what we we feel it's important for us. Again, small sided games, and and having that intent there to to find a way to put them in game situations as fast as we can, as much as we can. We feel is very very important based on the profile of our players. So we don't have a lot of club players. <laughs> Joey, on your uh, wall game, are those kids, are they the outside players, are they neutral players? Yes, they are neutral, yes. Thank you, Warren. Uh, they, we usually give them a two-touch limit. Um, so they're, they're in the game. Everybody has a role. That's why they enjoy it. Uh, you know, I always reference to Jose Ortiz because, you know, he's a dynamic player that I'm sure some some of us know. Um, but when he's on the wall, he's the, he's the most animated on there. He wants the ball. So he's begging for somebody to play him a ball so he can give it right back to somebody. So it's it's a great game. It's a competitive game. And like I said, they that's one of their favorites. They love that game. Hey, and then on the sidelines, feel free to ask questions. I know that, that Joey would be more than happy to, to answer anything, but also on the side, I put in the webinar uh, resource as well as I'm now putting in the in the uh, contact information, make sure that you're part of that. And that way you always get the, the mail outs and, and access to everything we have. So if you haven't already done so, uh, please go ahead and uh, put in the, in your contact information and we'll keep you posted on all the stuff. And so Joey, so one thing I did ask a question, do you notice like a huge improvement over the, the four years as they start going into the last group as they're leaving out are really making a huge difference where you're not teaching as much and it's almost like a, as it is instead of what they got to learn. So I, I think they're, especially, you know, we've had some, some guys who the light bulb doesn't come on to their senior year. Like, Oh, this is why we do it. And you know, you see it in the game, you see them understanding angles and you see them understand why they, we do certain things. You know, we always try to teach the why, you know, you know, that's why we go in so much detail on Mondays. So this is the why, this is why you do certain things. And so sometimes for some players, it, it it takes them all the way to their junior senior year to realize, understand, I get it now, coach. I appreciate that. You know, so this is why we try to teach this every year. It's usually in the same format every, you know, since the very beginning, you know, I've changed things here and there, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty much the same thing that we've done. And, you know, for the past, I'd say three or four years, we've only allowed maybe 13 to 14 goals in district. Um, so it's been it's been vital for us. It's been huge for us for our guys that you know everybody's an attacking everybody's Ronaldo or everybody's a Messi in, in in our area. So to be able to have to hey you know we need we need defenders to be able to make sure we keep the 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 score at a at a reasonable level. We, we you got to learn to defend and you got to buy into it as much as you can. And you might not like it, but you got to buy into it and do it. <laughs> That was really, really good. Anybody else have questions? Yeah, Joey, it's Fred. Uh, do you have the same thing for your offense that you do during the year? What do you mean? The presentation, showing the breakdown uh, and how you do it week by week. No, I, I, I haven't. I haven't brought. I haven't broken it down. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Did you want to meet me today on my way? If, yeah, if you get bored, buddy, I'm glad to steal everything. <laughs> I'll, I'll look at it and see you. See what we what I'll, I'll show what we do uh, to get into our attacking principles. A lot of a lot of it is combination play. Basically, what a lot of what we do again, going back to the team concept. These guys don't know what combination play are. Wall passes, overlaps, uh, double pass. You know, the you know they all know the one two. That's the easiest one, the wall pass. But they they still don't recognize when and where to do it. So. We, we use that. We do the same. It's the same format. We break it down. We're going to one goal, and then the, the game day on Friday. You know, a lot of it's the same. Hey, quick question, Coach. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we, we're going to block this year. We used to see our kids every day. Now we're going to block schedule, so we go every other day. 
I know you told me that you get to see your kids every every day now for the last two years. What did you do beforehand? How did you break it up uh, when you saw them every other day before you got the, the privilege of having them every day? Well, uh, we didn't lift. That was the only difference. Uh, we, you know, I tried to get them maybe after school to lift to do an open weight lifting thing, but they wouldn't stay. Or, you know, at our school, I, I kind of volunteer tell them that they have to run cross country in the fall. So a lot of them are running. Um, so I use that as a tool to get them to come after school. So, uh, ignore the weightlifting part of it. And when on the days that you do meet them, if they don't come after school, I use that to run. I use that as fitness days for those guys that don't come after school. So basically every day that I see them, I'm running this session. I'm running a session that we're doing, you know, just absolutely, you know, just take out the weightlifting days. That's basically what I did. You know, I, the weightlifting is important for us. I think that's really what turned the corner. You know, we, when I first got there, we we made the playoffs, go run uh, one round, two rounds, and that was it. The weightlifting is what got us going and got us stronger, got us faster. And I believe that kind of turned the corner where now we're in the third, fourth round. Um, you know, not every year, but, at, you know, a decent, consistent basis. But congratulations on, on being able to get double block. I think, I think block scheduling is more for athletics than anything. To me personally, so if you can find a way to talk into getting double block, it's that'd be critical, you know. And it took me a while; it took me a lot of years of persuading to for them to do it. And in a big district like us in Arlington, we got seven, eight schools. You know, you got to have other schools to help you out on that and to help fight that for you. So you got to get your coaches to really push for it. Um, so. I, I just keep fighting the good fight on that. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach. Uh oh. How many? How many, uh, how many coaches do you have on your staff? Um, as of the past couple of years, we we created two freshman teams uh, because we've always had so many numbers, um, and we just didn't feel right cutting a lot of freshmen you know freshmen is always that awkward stage where they don't know where they fit in and so we felt like we were doing a better job not only for our program but mainly for the school so that maybe we can hold more kids accountable and hopefully improve our test scores at least that's what i tell our principal why we create the fourth freshman team um but you know when the first the first year we created our four, our four, our second freshman team, you know, was four years ago, and this year on our varsity team we had four guys come from that from that group, you know, and you just don't know what what guys how they develop, you know, some develop at a later age, some do, but to answer your question, because of that fourth team, we're able to get a fourth coach. But right now, if we didn't have that fourteen, we'd just have straight three coaches, and that's it. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Yep. I have a quick question. What do you do with those guys? You said that the white team, the guys you're going to cut. What do you do with them during the athletic class? Uh, we're still coaching them. Maybe not as much. Uh, that's, I leave our, my JV got coach, so. I say, hey, you get it, you need to go handle them. I'll I'll handle the, the varsity and JV group. But yes, we, we are still coaching them. Maybe not as intense, maybe not as much, but you know, we definitely feel want them to not feel left out, even though they probably do. Uh, you know, no matter what you look at it, you know, if you look at the groups and be like, you know, I'm not in these groups, I, I don't even know what I'm doing. But you know, I still have my JV coach out there coaching them up. You know, I'll maybe say a couple things to them here and there, you know, to make sure they're on, on board still. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I, I hate to say that. I don't mean to be mean, but it's kind of like, Hey, you know, I really want to focus on the varsity and, and possibly some of the JV guys that I feel that can help us. Yeah. Cause I guess my problem is that we are limited in field space. We have one field that we have to split with football. So we have at most probably half a field most days. Right. So. No, I understand that. So I've been, again, crossing my fingers, I've blessed, been blessed with a really good football coach who helped me get my varsity JV period into third block, which is us in that block is us and volleyball. And that's it. 
So I have access to every field that I want. I have access to the weight room. If I want to change, if there's a, there's going to be like a rainy day on a, on a Wednesday and we can't go outside and I might flip it. I might, all right, we're, we're lifting on this Wednesday and then we're going to go outside on Thursday because it's not going to rain Thursday. I have that option because I have everything accessible to me, but you know, with you, yeah, you're, that's a tight situation. Uh, yeah, if you notice the art that that wall game is based on using half a field and how I can get as many numbers as I can on a half a field, you know, that, you know, if you go and send you, groups of seven, that's 28 guys you have on half a field, you, you divide it up and, you know, what's that? 56, 56 guys on, on a full field. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody's doing something, you know, so you kind of have to kind of get creative. I, I understand it. You know, we were kind of in the same boat when I first got to Sam, uh, with us in the girls' soccer, you know, we had to split the varsity field, and that you know, especially on rainy days, that was the only dry field we had. So we had to get kind of get creative on how we use the field space. And you said you're on third block. Is that immediately after lunch? That is during the lunch period. So the guys will go, um, will work out first, and then have their thirty to forty minute after after class. So it's it's actually. The full, if you look at it, the full time, seating time in that period, I think it's like 95, 96 minutes. It's the longest period in the day. So I'm actually cheating. I'm getting a couple more minutes every day uh, being in third block. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Again, I appreciate it. I, I you know, I... I said, I'm getting out of my comfort zone. I don't usually don't talk this much. My, you know, Warren will tell you I, I'm a very quiet guy. Um, but, um, you know, I, I enjoy sharing the stuff that we do in, in hopes that somebody else will share and hopefully I can get something out of them. Uh, so, I, again, appreciate your time being here. Well, thank you very much, Joey. I appreciate your time as well. And that was awesome today. Um, as we start going moving forward, I know we've had a couple of people put forth ideas. Marty, I'm trying to find somebody for the. Um, I think Fred's working on it too. To find somebody for uh, <laughs> recruiting. So I know that was one topic that came up. Hey, if you know somebody you'd like to hear speak as well, if you guys will drop us a line or email us, uh, we'll we'll pull on anybody. Or if you feel like you want to feel like Joey didn't get out of the comfort zone because he's exactly right. This is probably the most I heard him talking by the whole time I've known him. So, but that being said, you know, if you feel like there's something you'd like to present, you know, anybody can present to the group and everybody's got something of value to bring to the group. And that's what made this thing or makes this thing so special. But that being said, uh, Joey, thank you very much for, for your time and for what you did. Once again, uh, Wednesday night, 9 p.m., uh, we've got Paul Rogers with the Houston Dynamo coming on. And then uh, Saturday, uh, the women's coach at uh, – Sam Houston State. So I guess we're going to do two Sam Houston's in a in a week, right? One college, one high school, and then we'll go on from there. The the following week, we're looking at another one. Should be pretty good. So, but I appreciate you guys' time, especially on a Memorial Day weekend, and look forward to Wednesday.